Hi, I'm Ji Chen. Today I will be presenting with Lan, Simin, Rio, and Tong Yi. We are from University of Minnesota Twin City Carlson School of Management MSB program. Our topic is about predicting MLB game attendance, optimizing operational efficiency through predictive modeling. Attendance is very important for the success of MLB. Accurately predicting the attendance can impact both long-term and short-term profitability and operational efficiency. However, attendance can be extremely challenging due to the many factors that can influence them, leading to inaccurate forecasts and potentially suboptimal business decisions. So the key question is, how can we use attendance forecasting to inform future business decisions? Let's see how we do that. To answer that, first we want to think that there are operations such as staff hiring, schedule planning, and season ticket price determination that requires the team to plan before the season. We want to know how we can use data to make informed decision for the long-term planning. To answer that, we will propose a preseason attendance prediction model so that the team can use it to plan before the season starts. As we move into the season, we will obtain more data before each game such as who is playing for the next few games and the weather forecast for the next week and the team performance so far. And we want to know how we can leverage new data to help business to optimize short-term decisions such as concession and merchandise sales preparation for the next few games. And we want to make sure that there are enough hot dogs for everyone. To help with that, we propose a second model that takes account all the factors that will be known before each game. And lastly, besides the attendance number, we also want to identify that what are the important factors that affect the attendance and how are they different across uh, teams. To do that, we will interpret the important we will interpret the future importance for the above models and give recommendations. And before we jump into the detail of our solution, let's look at uh, the data source that we use for this project. And we were provided the game logs from 2000 to uh, 2022. And we use all the data because we want to capture the, the most historical variance of the attendance. And we also use uh, uh, many data from sportsreference.com and uh, Baseball Data Bank. They are both uh, open and free resources online. And we will talk about the specific feature that we use later on. And a couple notes about the data pre-processing. Uh, first, we removed the 2020 and uh, 2021 uh, season data because they were affected by COVID. And we also removed the tiebreaker games bef uh, for the preseason model because those information won't be available uh, before the season. So first, let's go through how we use the preseason attendance prediction model to solve the first question. To better predict attendance, we believe thinking in sports fans' shoes can help us target which factors can be good candidates for the use of prediction. Since fans may decide whether or not to attend a specific game after thinking through those factors. Considering in this perspective, we categorize factors into three major groups, including team performance, players, and calendar. For team performance, we have Season and rank, win loss ratio, total number of runs scored, and a lot for home and visiting team. And for players, we have factors like number of all star players in team, top 10 players in team, and whether there's a previous season MVP in team or not. For calendar, we add year, month, weekday number, and holidays into consideration. With these features, we use Temporal Fusion Transformer as of our optimal choice to model the relationship between these features and attendance. So for Temporal Fusion Transformer, this is a cutting edge uh, model which has been just released in early 2020. And here we provide an example of how Transformer works. We want to use this model to translate Chinese into English and how Transformer does is to read all the information from above and then translate this sentence word by word. To be more specific, uh, when the model tries to translate the upcoming words, the former information will also add into consideration into the model training process and to help us get the accurate result. And 
Back to our situation here, which is to forecast time series data. This is pretty much similar with the translation process. So the model will also take into account the impact of all the historical data, which is the previous attendance when forecasting the future attendance. And transformer is capable of precising multiple heterogeneous time series data simultaneously and can achieve high performance across multi-time period forecasting. When it comes to the model result, we use uh, the data from year of 2022 as our out of sample uh, data to uh, evaluate our model performance. We choose mean absolute percentage error as our key metric. Considering using errors like mean absolute error or root mean square error as measure can be misleading because for some teams, mean attendance are relatively lower than other teams. So using a general like thousands of attendance error can cause large bias and difference between actual data and predicted data. To compare our model result, we also built a linear regression model with a MAPE of 35%. And our transformer model has a MAPE of 17%, which can provide us nearly 20% more accuracy. Um, now we move to the second part. We want to acknowledge that as we embark on a new season, we'll collect new data that help make predictions even more accurate dynamically. To do that, here we added several new features into each category. For team performance, we have in-season game performance and add previous games attendance directly as lab turns. For players, we add average batter and pitcher age as proxies for player popularity and fan base. Now that we get the full list of players in the new season. For the calendar, we also include NBA and F NFL and NHL game up schedules. It makes sense that if on the same day too, there are two sports games, the clash can impact the attendance for both sides. For the in-season dynamic model, we leverage like GBM instead for several reasons. First, the model is capable of efficiently processing a large number of features and automatically generating feature importance, allowing businesses to gain insights into the most important factors affecting their predictions. On top of that, IGBN's fast training speed allows for quick iteration and retraining for the model when new data is received, making it a flexible tool for short-term time series forecasting and it, and it enabled us to build a model per team to achieve better performance. As the results, we see the light GBM predictions here now notated by the red dotted line in the slide aligns very well with the actual observations and it slightly outperforms previous transformer model. Besides predicting attendance, we also want to utilize important factors from the model to inform better operational strategies. To answer this question, we will interpret important factors from the feature importance graph that we gained from the light GBM model. Here are the top features we find to be important. Basically, they can be categorized into the following six groups of statistics. Uh, including team fix factors, calendar pass attendance, in-season performance, player age, and last season performance. Beyond finding the important features, we also want to know the relationship between the feature and the attendance. So we do one more step, which is the partial dependence plot. Uh, the partial dependence plot shows the marginal effect that a factor have on the predicted outcome of the model. To be simpler, the plot shows the relationship between attendance and a factor. To compare the different effects on different teams, we select four teams, which are Los Angeles, Houston, Minnesota, Twins, and Oakland. They are based on the result of clustering on game performance. We got four clusters from the clustering, which represents for four tiers of players, and we choose one team out of each cluster. To better compare the partial dependencies between four teams, we rescale the partial dependence into zero to one, which is the y-axis here. From the plot, we can see an obvious spikes on Friday, but this is actually the same without common sense. Uh, but for the relationship on weekdays, they are different from team to team. As example we showed here, Oakland and Minnesota Twins also has high attendance on Wednesday. 
So Wednesday would be an optimal choice if we are going to schedule a game during weekday. The next example we want to show is uh, win-loss ratio. Well, uh, win-loss ratio is calculated by the cumulative win-loss ratio up until the latest game in current season. Generally, the better result in the previous games, the higher attendance appears. But how good is good? How good a result is attractive to the audience? Different team has different standards for a good enough result. For example, most of the team only considered half or more wins are attractive, but for Houston, one win out of three games is already good enough to attract the high attendance. Based on this, we recommend to customize different marketing timing for different teams in order to get a good ROI. But for Minnesota Twins, only if the team reach a 0.55, the marketing team can start to consider that, okay, we can put win-loss ratio as a good selling point. The last important factor we want to introduce is the opponent runs allowed. Runs allowed is a metric for defense. A higher score means a weaker defense. For most of the team, we observe that the stronger the defense of visiting team, the higher attendance appears. So this can be a good marketing content when we encounter a strong defense team. But this effect is weaker for Minnesota Twins. The attendance remains relatively high unless the visiting team is extremely weak at defense. This indicates that opponent runs allowed may not be a good focus for marketing contents comparing to other teams. Audience in Minnesota here has no obvious preference on the defense performance of visiting team. Here, we only pick three features as an example, but actually we can plot this partial dependence plot on every features and for every team. So all of our recommendation here can be customized to team by team. And here's a quick recap of our work. For the preseason model, we would, uh, we deliver the temporal fusion transformer and the 2023 attendance prediction. For the in-season model, we deliver the light GBM model for each of the 30 teams. And uh, for the feature importance, we deliver the partial dependency plot for all 30 teams and we gave recommendations. And here's a quick, Overview of our recommendations for the preseason model, we can use uh, features, calendar features like day of the week to customize schedule optimization for each of the team. For the in-season model, we can use uh, features like uh, win-loss ratio and then opponents runs allow to customize different market timing and uh, marketing content for different teams. In the future, if we may want to further improve our work, we may consider those three domains. The first part is we can incorporate more features like weather data, like the twist. It can show the preference for the fans to the certain players and teams. We can have promotion data. We can also have the ticket price, which can be divided to the seasonal ticket and non-seasonal ticket. And also the TV viewership is also important. And for the model refinement part, we may consider more computational resources. We can optimize model setting. And we may also find a granular level, like we can build a model within a month to build a monthly level model so that we can get a better prediction. And third part is we can build a real-time dashboard. It can help business make timely decisions. It can also respond quickly to changes in the attendance. That's our presentation. Thank you.